Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. Be on the watch. There are ways out. There is a light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Your life is your life. Be on the watch. The gods will offer you chances. Know them. Take them. He can't beat death, but he can beat death in life sometimes. And the more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. Your life is your life. Know it while you have it. You are marvelous. The gods wait to delight in you. If you are going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you are going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Go all the way. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. All the way. All the way. You will ride life straight to perfect laughter. It's the only good fight there is. If you are going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you are going to try, go all the way. As the year of 2019 is coming to an end, we will be closing the year with many disappointments for Conor McGregor. The man who once was the biggest and most exciting man of the game has fallen into a pit of rejection by the very crowd that brought him to the top of the mountain. For Conor McGregor to get this chapter of his career behind him will be the most important thing in his entire career up until this point. So as the year of 2020 slowly creeps up on us and the return of Conor McGregor against Al Cerrone approaches, the question that remains is, will Conor McGregor reclaim his momentum and re-establish himself as the notorious one or will he end up as what once was the notorious one? Let's start at the beginning of it all. When Habib Nurmagomedov submitted Conor McGregor, the look on Conor's face at that point said it all. This was a man who lost the fight, but it was not a man who was defeated at all. Immediately looking to get back in there with the undefeated champion. Now, that look told me that Conor McGregor realized how quickly things can change in the sport and he had to change with it. Just assuming that you're going to kill your opponent is one thing, but doing it is another, especially when you don't credit your opponent and what he can do enough. When you do that, that is when the opponent can creep up and surprise you and defeat you. Conor is a fighter who knows how to lose. So when he does lose, it doesn't crush him and it doesn't put him out of the game. He simply looks back at what he did wrong and he tries to correct it and then enter the rematch way better prepared. This is the fight business. It can be very, very um, cruel at times. So this is, this is it. I'll take it like a man. Uh, I'll learn from it and I'll come back. Better. However though, that rematch is not a certainty. But what is a certainty is his opponent, Cowboy Donald Cerrone. Now with an opponent set in stone and is official, let's go into a deeper discussion and talk about whether Conor McGregor can get back to the top and stay there or are his best days behind him. To get a good read on this, let us take a look back in time when Conor McGregor lost to Nathan Diaz. At this time, McGregor was obviously on top of the world at the peak of his, I would say, train of hype. 
right? All the steam that he got behind him. It was just the peak of it. And then going into a fight with Nate Diaz, who's obviously a very outspoken and big fan favorite, for him to lose in that type of a match very unexpectedly, to some extent obviously, in the common opinion, Khan was really just expected to win this fight. He was doing very well up until the point where he started to slow down, end up getting submitted, right? We know the story. And right at the point that Khan got defeated and submitted, in his eyes, he kind of had the same look that he had with Habib, right? He lost and he just had a look in his face where, okay, I lost, I'm just gonna keep my chin up, I'm gonna go back to the drawing board, correct everything that I did wrong and then just come back better. And that is what he did in the second fight, he came in, was able to drop Nathan Diaz a couple of times and he got himself a decision victory. And now the question remains, can he do that against Habib Nurmagomedov? To be honest with you guys, that is a question only Tommy can answer. But if we take a look at Conor McGregor before entering a fight, a potential rematch with Habib, the part where Conor McGregor can win for himself internally, which can be like an, an internal victory, if you want to call it, is just the fact that he can go into that fight, not undermine Habib, respect him, prepare accordingly, and just execute a proper game plan. In the fight, Conor McGregor really he just did not care like he said right he just didn't care he marched forward and just didn't respect him at all in between rounds connor did not listen to his corner at all when he got behind the black line you chased him so let's keep him behind the black line let him come to you coach kavanaugh was telling him hey connor stick behind the black line don't go at habib let him come to you let him make the mistakes right just counter when he opens up to you and he did not do that in the third round same thing happened and then after finally listening to his corner he had arguably his best round so take that however you want to take it right you can say that okay conor mcgregor you know he did not expose himself or put him in a position where habib can counter him or you know find an opening to shoot in on him all too much and that is exactly what it did in the first two rounds and you know that's just a fact right conor mcgregor came forward overextended with his uh, high kick as soon as habib shot him for a takedown he tried to meet him with a knee in the second round conor mcgregor goes in for a flying knee and then a superman punch whatever it may be right so in a sense Conor did not fight accordingly to what is the most efficient for his style now let's assume that he does fight accordingly to his style can he beat him in my opinion like i said only time can tell that at this moment of time i am more so leaning towards the fact that he's not going to be able to defeat habib but i've doubted conor mcgregor before and he proved us all wrong right so maybe he can do it again that is just something only time can tell but Conor is not going to come back against habib he's coming back to fight donald Cowboy Cerrone at 170 pounds. What this match really means is this. Conor McGregor cannot afford one bit to slack off or not take it seriously, right? He said during the preparation, no more drinking of his whiskey, no more, you know, staying up late, whatever it may be doing, right? He's always dedicated, waking up at the same time every single day, going to the gym, just dedicating himself back to the craft 100% and we haven't seen this from Conor McGregor ever since the Eddie Alvarez fight probably right so it's good to have him back fully focused and also at the same time there were talks about Conor McGregor and his coach John Kavanaugh that they were not having the closest of connections right the closest of relationships and this was especially right after the UFC fight right coach Kavanaugh said that right after the fight that Conor McGregor and him did not speak and it was kind of like a situation where connor and his coach were just nothing but that right so connor was not fully committed with his coach and right now it seems like they fixed it right they're always you know pushing together they're always in the gym together right now obviously connor has a fight coming up so that is to be expected but other than that i feel like connor has you know rekindled that light and excitement for the sport and that willingness to prove something right before before getting rich before winning the belts what he wanted to prove was that he was the best in the world right he wins the belts you know make a lot of money okay go in there he does that as well now he is being seen as the guy that has done it all has beat them all and has lost his hunger right he is his belly is full he, he doesn't want it anymore and now after losing and being kind of like alienated by the community connor is coming back to prove that he is still a part of the community and still the face of the fight game can he do that we will see in 2020 but for right now his mindset his approach everything his preparation he looks in phenomenal shape 170 pounds even during the whole nate diaz thing connor mcgregor did not look as solid as he does right now you know just looking at the pictures connor is looking in tremendous shape and obviously with the two fights that connor has had at 170 the first one where he completely gassed out and lost and then the second fight where he paced himself well but still had a little dip but then came back right maybe this time around Khan is going to find the optimal balance the perfect peak 
conditioning and the right efficiency for his output and he has the perfect opponent to display his skills again cowboy donald cerrone he's not going to go in there and immediately try to take connor down right he's going to go in there and have a beautiful stand-up fight with conor mcgregor because that's really what donald cerrone always likes to do and that is exactly what conor mcgregor likes to do as well so for donald cerrone to go into a fight with conor mcgregor at 170 right he doesn't have to cut weight he's going to be healthy he's going to be well hydrated he's not going to be drained and susceptible to getting knocked out making the likelihood of conor mcgregor knocking out donald cabo cerrone less likely but it's still a very good option right it's still probably a very realistic scenario that can play itself out but the odds of the knockout happening at least early on in the fight may be a bit less likely but at this point you're just really picking at details right if conor lands a perfectly timed haymaker right on the temple of cerrone's head or just right on the chin you know he's probably going to go down so whether it is 170 or 155 it's not going to take away from the left hand shot in my opinion but if we're going to take a look at this fight conor mcgregor versus donald cerrone in this matchup conor mcgregor is being looked at as the obvious guy that will win this fight right the the fan favorite right just you know the, just the a side he's going to go in there and destroy cowboy donald cerrone well in my opinion this fight is going to be actually pretty hard for conor mcgregor we haven't really seen conor go in there and fight against somebody who has a legit kicking game has great distance management can fight pretty well on the long to medium range and just in general have more than just the weight on him at 170. Nate Diaz, yes, he just had, you know, his weight and size, but when it came to stand-up striking, Conor McGregor was just a way better fighter, right? He was just countering him all over the place, and the success that Nate Diaz had really just came when Conor McGregor just was very low on stamina, but when it comes to Donald Cerrone, he doesn't really need to depend on Conor McGregor slowing down, and he can make it a competitive fight regardless of that. For Conor, obviously, his way to approach this fight is to come forward, controlled, pressure the best thing that conor mcgregor can do for himself is take away donald cerrone's kicking game if donald cerrone can't kick and conor mcgregor is pressuring donald cerrone well donald cerrone is in a world of trouble his boxing is very short like the the way that donald cerrone boxes and predominantly punches he fights and throws the punches in a very tight manner right he doesn't really cover too much distance he always steps into his shots he switches stances and whatnot making himself very likely to walk into a Conor McGregor counter and get himself hit with the left hand. And that is exactly what Conor needs to do, just control pressure while coming forward. Donald Cerrone, he doesn't really like being pressured. He's very good at the medium to, you know, medium to long range where he can kick and make it a chess match. Conor McGregor, he doesn't really do that, right? When is the last time that you saw Conor stand in the middle of the octagon and play chess with the opponent? He's just always coming forward and always trying to make it a dogfight. And I believe that he will do that again against Donald Cerrone. However, like I said, he has never faced anybody that will legitimately implement the kicking game. How well can Conor deal with the kicking game of Donald Cerrone as he's trying to come forward, right? Obviously, the leg kicks. Eddie Alvarez tried to do it, but he couldn't really keep it up because he was getting pressured all too much. And Eddie's not really the best of kickers anyway. Donald Cerrone, on the other hand, he is. And if he can implement a kicking game where he can chop down Conor McGregor's right leg by throwing outside leg kicks, then Conor's going to have a hard time closing the distance getting a read on the opponent and if he's being kept at that distance conor mcgregor he always likes to counter right he's always in that mood where whenever the first punch comes he's going to try to slip it and then come back with his own left shot he doesn't really like to wait on the opponent to finish their combinations to then come back he just always likes to immediately counter the first strike this can get himself into trouble right because for example against jose aldo the first right hand feint that Josie Aldo threw, Conor McGregor was already on his way to counter, but at the same time, Josie Aldo was able to land his own hook, but obviously at that point he was knocked out. So what I'm trying to say is this, if Donald Cerrone can successfully bait and feint Conor McGregor to react to a straight and then set him up with a high kick, well that can be very disastrous. Donald Cerrone can knock out anybody with his high kicks. However though, right now, Conor McGregor in my opinion is the favorite to win this match and not only win, I believe that the likelihood of him winning by a finish are virtually the only ways that I see Conor McGregor winning this match. And then when he does, when he does win and he gets on the mic and he goes into the post-fight press conferences, right, regardless of what happens after the fight, before the fight, when his press conferences take place, when his interviews take place, all the people that turn their backs on Conor McGregor and always talk bad about him, I would say it is a very emotional reaction that mainly comes from frustration with conor mcgregor everybody loves conor mcgregor's fighting you may not like what he does outside of the octagon 
but who cares what he does outside the octagon as long as it does not take away from what his job is, fighting. And McGregor's outside of the octagon life has taken him away from the octagon up until this point. However though, he is right now back and as soon as the man is back in the media, back in the public eye, back fighting, he can bring the excitement back to the game. And there's only one Conor McGregor that can do this. We have to give the man his respect. Whoever fights McGregor not only signs a red panty night, but more importantly, if he can defeat Conor McGregor, you yourself become a megastar. Look at Nate Diaz. Just came off probably one of the biggest pay-per-views of the entire year. Look at Habib Nurmagomedov going into another country and fighting in an arena that was only built for him, right? Getting paid four million dollars or whatever it was. The man can build you, right? It is a very big opportunity to fight Conor McGregor. And if you can beat him, well, you're just on cloud nine. So Cerrone is definitely not going to let this chance go. He just signed a four fight contract or whatever it was. He has no intentions of retiring. So if he can win, wouldn't that be great for Cerrone? But let us bring our focus back to McGregor winning. Conor McGregor defeating Cerrone, it is more so a personal victory. And at this point, Conor McGregor needs a personal victory, right? Beating Cerrone at 170 is never going to get you a title shot with Habib. Never, you know, you don't move up in the ranks. You don't do anything. Granted, given the fact that Conor McGregor is in the top three, he's already eligible to fight for the title if the right opportunity presents itself. However, though, Tony Ferguson is going to be fighting Habib. So right now, just for him to go in there, Conor, and defeat Cerrone at 170 to then expect a Habib rematch you know that's foolish but he knows that himself so that is why he also said that in may june whatever it may be he is planning to fight yet again and right now it seems to be most likely jorge masvidal but in my opinion that is going to be a very tough fight for mcgregor however though this seems to be a venture that in my opinion conor mcgregor should not really go at let's just say that he beats jorge masvidal as well then what then what is he going to go in there and fight kamaru usman even if he beats kamaru usman and becomes a three-weight world champion the there is still that fight that everybody wants to see, the Habib rematch. And Conor, right now, he has to earn it. And the only opponent that Conor can fight that can earn himself, in my opinion, that title shot is by fighting Justin Gaethje. Justin has been winning lately, and assuming Tony Ferguson loses, he will probably fight Dustin Poirier or something. So if Conor can go in there and defeat Gage as well, that can earn him a Habib rematch. And Habib, his time is also limited in the sport. He's not going to go on forever either. He said that he probably has two or three fights in him left. So if Conor McGregor wants to return with vengeance, he has to do it fast. McGregor is not getting any younger. Time is ticking. Habib, maybe in the next two years, he's already retired. Tony Ferguson, who knows, right? The entire lightweight division's landscape can change within the next two years. You never know. So if Conor wants to do it, it has to happen fast and it has to happen next year. And so far, McGregor's holding up to his own promises of fighting three times next year. He said January 18th, we have that pay-per-view. He's fighting Cerrone and hopefully for him, he can win the fight. And at some point late next year, we can have the inevitable Habib versus Conor McGregor rematch. That is, in my opinion, the main storyline that has to be completed. Whether Conor wins or loses, that is just not what is important. In my opinion, Conor McGregor can have an internal victory by coming in a lot more prepared and a lot more sharp to fight Habib. Because that way, we know that Conor McGregor, he tried his very best. He was at his very peak. And if he can defeat him, great. If he doesn't, great. He at least tried. And then we can know that the best Conor McGregor was either enough or not enough to beat Habib. But one thing is certain, McGregor can only perform better than what he did in the first fight. Habib, he just had the perfect fight, perfect game plan, executed everything perfectly, right? He just had the 10 out of 10 performance. McGregor, on the other hand, not so much. So if he comes in prepared and sharp, it is only up from there for McGregor. Will it be enough? Well, for that, we will have to wait and see. Because in the end, only time will tell what will truly happen. For now, this was my take on McGregor's vengeance in 2019 at your past and you'll end up staying there it's okay to look back and admire it but you carry on i'm not i'm not i'm not in the business of staring staring back at it you know what i mean i'm getting lost back there just people say you can people say a loss can make or break a fighter but trust me a win can also make or break a fighter because they get comfortable with it with a win people can get comfortable with a, with a win and 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 slack off then slack off on the training slack off on the diet they've won one they're winners now that's not me, you know, you sleep, on a, you sleep on a win and you'll wake up with a loss, so I just carry on. Will Connor succeed or will he fail? Leave it all in the comment section down below. And as always, I have been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off. Later.